Hey guys, Epicenter Brian here. Hey, uh, today's going to be kind of a fun show and tell day. This is a video about one of my projects. Now, you might not be interested in this, so just go ahead and hit the skip button. Um, but for the guys that are, this is a Fairchild record cutting lathe. Um, this is a model uh, 539A. It looks like this. Now, I'm in the process of making some mods to this. One of the modifications I'm doing has to do with all of this stuff out here. Um, but anyway, the way this lathe worked is it would cut at one speed across the disc. We call this the LPI, lines per inch. And all the way from the beginning to the end, it would be the same speed. Now, ideally, you'd like to be able to do a lead in at about 16 LPI and then be able to cut the music um, you know, anywhere from 100 to maybe 300 LPI. And then at the end of the song, you'd like to be able to cut into the center at 4 LPI. Okay? Well, this machine couldn't do that. And um, it wasn't really adjustable in terms of the LPI um, without, you know, doing some goofy things. So inside of here is a bunch of gears. And what you would do is you would pick one of the gears, and there were like four different uh, LPI gears. This one happens to be for 161 LPI. So anyway, you'd open this up, you'd put the gear in there, and then um, it would cut at that speed all the way across the disc. Well, I wanted to be able to do this differently. So what I did was I built this mechanism. This has some parts, uh, three different parts that are printed on my 3D printer. There's a stepper motor here, and that in combination with this micro-stepping step motor drive, this is able to turn, well, it takes a it takes a hundred thousand steps per one revolution of this motor. So I'm able to run this very, very slowly, and um, and it's very smooth because there are so many steps. Anyway, so that has a belt to a pulley down in here. So there's a, a pulley here and a pulley down in here. And you'll see that there is another pulley here. That's going to a bigger one here. So this is actually a two to one ratio. There's a manual hand control out here. And you see the same shaft is connected to this optical encoder. Now this is measuring the RPM of the shaft. Okay. Now, because of some magic that I discovered, and it has to do with inside of here, um, the pulley here actually has a one-way bearing installed on the inside. So let me show you what this does. I can take manual control of this and I can rotate that shaft faster just by hand. And you can see that the motor is still turning um, but I'm actually controlling the speed of this by this handle out here. And that's because of the one-way bearing uh, that's installed here. Okay, so anyway, right now I have this set to run at 161 LPI. And that equates to um, 6.62 RPM. So I have a, a display hooked up to this optical encoder over here. And you can see that that is 6.6, .6, varies, you know, a little bit. Part of that is I've discovered that, um, um, that these pulleys are not perfectly centered on the shaft. So anyway, I'm going to look at uh, fixing that. But we can see that it is running at 6.6. .6. Okay, now, for 161 LPI with my setup here, now this is with my 32-pitch lead screw, um, it takes 11.042 kHz, and uh, that equates to 6.62 RPM. So for this frequency right now, for testing purposes, I have that coming from this function generator, and that's what's actually outputting the pulses to this. Okay, now this display over here is not here permanently. This is just for testing. And uh, so I've got another cool little display that I'm going to be using. And I'll show you that next. So over here is a little LCD touchscreen. And that is running to an Arduino processor. So the two communicate. And then the Arduino is going to be running some relays. 
Now the relays are going to be used to switch in some analog voltages. I'll explain that, but one for the lead-in speed, which is going to be um, 16 LPI. There's going to be one for the cut speed, and that will be adjustable um, from 100 to 300 probably. And <clears throat> I'm going to be using one of these really cool 10-turn, cool-looking pots here to uh, input the speed I want to run at. And then there's another one out here that's going to be for the lead out. Now what I've done is I've used a Fairchild logo. It's got the flying horse, you know, the Pegasus horse. And I don't know if you can see this very well, but anyway, the way this is going to work is when I touch that, it's going to bring up another logo. Now this one's a little more Art Deco, but it's still got the Pegasus um, in there as part of the logo. It kind of looks like a cutting stylus kind of looks like it's got record grooves and those are spaced together tightly so to kind of keep that theme this button over here looks like the grooves are spaced further apart and this looks like they're spaced even further apart so the way this would work is this would be the lead in okay and that runs a relay up here and then you could cut and you see a different relay running and then you could do a lead in to the next song you could cut at the LPI that would be specified, you know, on the dial. And then when you're all done, you could lead out to the end of the record. And then you're all done. Now, a couple other cool things. Um, I've got a hidden button up here. And that has a little icon that looks like a light bulb. And that's going to run another relay for the lighting for um, the microscope. And also I'm going to put some other lighting up in here as well. So anyway, the cool thing is that carries around through all the different menus and uh, runs a different relay up here. And so anyway, that's about it on that section. So um, there's going to be a circuit over here that my friend Mark came up with that is going to take those voltages and um, you know when there's a change from one voltage to the next it's actually going to make that change over a little bit of time. So it's going to, it's going to um, cause that to be a ramp, more of a ramping function. And the reason for that is I'm running a stepper motor, which you can't just you know, change speeds like instantaneously. Um, and so what that does is in the analog world, it's going to do an acceleration and a deacceleration. Okay, now that now then runs into a voltage to frequency converter that I've got prototyped up here right now. And I've got a precision reference. Anyway, the idea here, uh, right now I've just got a, a pot here for doing testing. So I've got that turned up. I've got 10 volts going in. And I've got 500 kilohertz coming out very close, 499 point whatever kilohertz. And so the cool thing is I can change this voltage and you see that the frequency changes um, and these different voltages are going to be the different LPIs that I need. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to see was just how solid the voltage reference was and also see how stable the frequency was. And I'm very happy with that. So that looks like that's going to work great. And so just have to, uh, you know, test out this other part of the circuit and then start building up the whole circuit for real. Now, I know a couple of guys are going to want to know how loud that motor is when it's running at the really high speed for 4 LPI. So I'm going to get that set up real quick. For 4 LPI, I'm going to need 444.4444 kilohertz. And that will... Um, be running at about 266.6 RPM. Okay, so I'm going to dial that in and I'll show you what that's like. Okay, so we've got that going and that should be 266.6 and there it is. Okay, so that's running at 4 LPI right now and I'm going to go ahead and engage the, the cutting head here, uh, well, the lead screw, so that you can see how fast that moves. So that's for LPI of travel. There you go. 
All right. Okay, that's it. And the other cool thing is I can actually take control of this and run that faster as you as you see as long as the the manual input is faster than the motor I can actually override the motor which is pretty cool alright that's it okay well I hope you guys enjoyed that and uh, that's the kind of stuff I do on the weekends so for the epicenter.com I'm Epicenter Brian signing out